Okay, as you can see, it's 10-16-2013 at 1.14 p.m. My name is Lester Williams. I'm going to show you a video picture of my tent showing you that it's locked up here in San Diego County, San Diego, California. Okay. As a result of me being a target victim and activist concerning the crimes of what is known as organized stalking, I am subject to two clever overt harassment along all of my routes, including at this area. And part of the types of harassment of organized stalking and gang stalking is where they use a method that's called DNLP, and it can be Googled. DNLP. It stands for, it's, a bre it's an abbreviation for Dark Neuro Linguistic Programming. I didn't develop their methods, I'm only exposing them. They set up some individuals about 200 feet away who yell gang stalking periodically from a distance, and they're also placing individuals that get on bicycles and say the same thing as they go by. Now, Periodically, when they do that, they'll say, why don't you come and steal our stuff? And that's the dark part of the neuro-linguistic programming, where they're basically trying to program your thinking about what you hear. Think about this. If you have any property, like your car or any of the personal possessions you have in your apartment or your home, and then someone threatens to steal them, what type of thought processes do you think that you will have in relation to, in response to the threat? They're trying to program your thinking in reference to the dark neuro linguistic programming concerning the dark statements that they say for you to hear. That's right. And it's basically done for brain entrainment, if you want to know the truth. Now, you can go to Google and YouTube and type in organized stalking or gang stalking and DNLP. And then in a separate search, instead of DNLP, type in brain entrainment. And it's basically where they're trying to psychically drive and steer your thinking in reference to the threat. The theme of the threat. That's why they get up on the sidewalk and will say gang stalker, and then they'll say, why don't you come and steal her stuff? Because they want me to know that the threat is anchored because of gang stalking, and it's being made because of gang stalking. They've also done the same thing over at UCSD on two separate occasions. They've had two separate individual students walk by me, and check this out. They did it when I was changing the batteries on my tape recorder. It's even running and recording right now. And basically what they did over at UCSD is they said, Gang Stalker, why don't you go and steal her stuff? And that's done to let me know, not only to try and reinforce the fear concerning my property being stolen, but it's also done to let me know that the same person is responsible for the harassment at UCSD as well. Because they want you to hate them in reference to the harassment you experience by the individuals they're duping and using on a daily basis. Who they're, See, what they basically do is anchor in a target's mind. My, they, what they do is anchor, okay, seat things in a target's mind to uh, mentally exhaust them, put them in a fearful mindset that they're going to be assaulted and or their property will be stolen or vandalized. And this is done as a result of the things that they will say around the target once they get the target's attention. That's why, in part, they're also saying gang stalking around me. That's right. And then, the, and then af uh, right after they say that, they will cleverly lace their dialogue they're having, it's called the direct conversation method, with anchored threats. Why don't you come and steal her stuff? Why don't you go and steal her stuff? Uh, why don't you kick her ass? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And that's all about anchoring fear that something's going to happen to you or your property. Now, you can research everything I've just stated to you. They will also use property owners. Now, think about this. The only way that they could know that I'm here in order to put them people over there to harass me by yelling gang stalking periodically from a distance and by putting the bicyclists up on the sidewalk who ride by periodically and say it, they got to know I'm here to do it which means they know who owns this property. Now, you can go to Google and type in organized stalking or gang stalking and property owners and or landlords. That's right. Look at how many Google general responses you get and look at what types of blogs and YouTube videos come up concerning other targeted individual statements concerning property owners and landlords. And basically what they do is create homelessness of a target, put them out on the street, and then have them gang stalk before, during, and after the homelessness is created in order to be able to put them in a victimized mindset and to keep them in it. And it's also done to try and make them believe that they have nowhere to run to. They'll gang stalk targets to multiple apartments, motel rooms, everywhere. Now, I have undisputable proof this crime's happening to me. A huge amount of undisputable, goal, undisputable, identical proof that gang stalk, gang stalker, gang stalk, and gang stalk, gang stalker, gang stalk, and gang stalk. Oh my God, is being said in that way along all my routes, even though. Recently, like in the past few months, I've been uploading quite a few videos of audio files and even video files of it current around me in that way along my routes. 
they saw it as a result of cyber surveillance being a method of gang stalking, which can be Googled. And so they backed off from doing that and have went back to uh, repeating physical gestures around me. It's just their stupid way to make a person feel stalked. So, and these are sensitization methods. So you can go to Google and type in every description I've stated. Let's see if I come back and there's anything wrong with this tent, damaged, stolen, missing, or trespass notice put on it. That would come from the landlord or an individual who's pretending to be the landlord. There's also property that's hidden close by, cleverly and out of sight. Now these, these wild animals, you can go to Google and type in organized stalking or gang stalking in street theaters. And basically what those are are staged events where they will stage an event, including staging the witnesses, and they will use anybody. This is a landmark showing you where I'm at in reference to this dead tree that's fallen. They will literally use anybody in a staged event. A mother walking her infant, a child, a teenager, an adult, a disabled person, a veteran, an elderly person. Because in organized stalking and gang stalking, it's designed to make the target appear crazy while pointing the finger at a target after an incident has occurred or while it's transpiring. Okay? So this is how organized stalking and gang stalking works. This is my way to expose the, fact the factual realities of what's happening to me. All you gotta do is look at it this way. Take two steps back and think to yourself, this woman, which I do, have over 700 separate audio files of gang stalk, gang stalker, gang stalking, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalker, gang stalking, gang stalk, gang stalk, gang stalker. Oh my God, we're crazy gang stalk being set around me in that way everywhere I go every single day for the last year and a half. That's right. I started uplo uploading the audio files of it being caught, being set around me to the internet. They saw it because of cyber surveillance. So now they're barely doing that anymore and, and just have went back to the uh, physical gestures. Like putting their hands to their face constantly, repeatedly, or up by their head, pointing. And it's done to actually, what they basically do is sensitize the target to everyday things that people do. That way they can make it appear that the target's crazy if the target, you know, uh, confronts anybody about what they're doing. But you can, most seasoned uh, targeted individuals can, can they're able to uh, discern when it's happening deliberately and when it's not. Because of the type of people they use, the, uh, the um, uh, extreme amount of repetition in reference to how much is done and the way it's done. That's right. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams. So let's see when I come back today if anything is missing from this hiking area, if a trespass notice is put on this tent or this area, any property is missing. And I'm here today to tell you, fellow American citizens, the bums that they set up 200 feet away, they're involved in gang stalking. And they're going to deny it up and down the road, call me crazy concerning it. And these individuals had the power position to use neighbors, like the ones up on the hill or across the street or anybody else that might live in the area. And if you don't believe me, go to YouTube and type in gang stalking blue in on steroids. You'll see that guy's gang stalked to his own house. You'll see that neighbors are involved in the gang stalking of him. And you'll see him stating he's being harassed everywhere he goes. Just do it. And you'll see that I'm telling you the truth. I gotta go. I'm getting a late start to my day. I appreciate you listening. And the only thing I hope and, and uh, uh, request for you to do concerning what's happening... Excuse me. Just had a Pop-Tart. Concerning what is happening to me is just, just just say a prayer for me. Now, I'm not involved in any illegal or criminal activity whatsoever. I am not crazy in any way, shape, or form, and I am not a threat to myself or others, even though I'm being provoked along all my routes, including at businesses, universities, public libraries, transportation services, bus stops, trolley stations, bus routes, trolley routes, stores, banks, post offices. Everywhere I go, I am subject to this crafted harassment because when you really look at it, if a person's only out and about in the community for three or four hours a day and they're going from one place to another and they're walking to a certain part of it, you know, like in reference to, like if I'm walking to a bus stop that only takes me five minutes to go to the bus stop, they put one person along that sidewalk to gaslight me. As I'm on my way to the bus stop, I get to the bus stop and they have a person sitting there waiting for me to arrive so they gaslight me. That's right. Then I get on the bus, somebody's already already on the bus, or that person gets on the bus and continues to gaslight me. So you got to look at this. In other words, if I didn't leave here today, there would be nobody gaslighting anybody up and down the road. As soon as I leave here, though, they're going to stage people to gaslight me. So what I'm trying to say is that for the small amount of time that I'm out and about in the community, it doesn't take a lot of effort for them to craft this harassment. Go to YouTube and type in, listen to a stranger, and you'll see how easy it is to do anybody to do anything for a person who either has a fake badge or a real badge, a power of authority. I literally got to go. I appreciate you listening. Thank you, and have a nice day.